Hello, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar. The next half hour or so, we would like to introduce to you our master program Law and Finance. The picture you see here on the screen is the toolbox for this master. You see a scale representing justice, a calculator for the finance elements, and of course in this day and age, a laptop. Hello, my name is Suyin Roost and I'm the program coordinator for this master. I would also like to introduce to you Professor Alessio Pacis, the program director. And on board we have today our students, Gos de Guven, Miguel Paz, who will uh, answer your questions throughout this webinar via chat. Also, after the presentations, the lines will still be open for about half an hour or so. And then later during the presentation, I will introduce Rafaela uh, Gilia to uh, explain her experience so uh, her experiences in so far. Okay, thank you. So here's the outline for today. First, Professor Pachis will explain the reasons why we started this master program last year, um, and also for whom this master is. We will then try to answer some of your questions. And then uh, we will answer some questions, ask some questions to you to make it interactive. So if you like, you can already type in the URL on your smartphones. Then uh, we will explain some elements of the curriculum. And then I will uh, introduce Rafaelia, our student voice for today. I will then talk about admission requirements and the procedure. And then we will have some time for questions again. Okay. Please know, by the way, that we also have an admissions office that, um, that you can also contact for any individual uh, application questions that you may have. I will share their contact details with you uh, towards the end of the presentation. So let us now kick off Professor Pachis. If you could take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shuin. So uh, let me start uh, from the reasons uh, for us to start this program. There's a very simple reason. And uh, this law and finance is everywhere. Think of yourself uh, 10 years from now, uh, you're uh, counseling, you're advising on the deal of the century, and you're sitting in a boardroom uh, with a lot of people, and at the other side of the paper, they're investment bankers, and you don't understand their language. You barely understand what they say. You don't want to be in that situation. And that is the reason why law firm clients prefer U.S. and U.K. lawyers who have studied both law and finance. Companies are even more demanding. They prefer employees who can bridge the chasm between legal and finance units. This program therefore aims to further students' career by combining these two complementary fields, law and finance. You may wonder what law and finance is actually, actually is. And I have two examples from the news. At the end of, the, of this month, the United Kingdom is set to leave the European Union. It's not very clear whether they will leave at the end of the month, whether they will at all, but let's assume as a thought exercise that they will. What are the consequences of that on banks, European banks? European banks are subject to bank capital regulation, and bank capital regulation comprises MRL, minimum on fund requirements and eligible liabilities. In this master, will explain what that means, why it should be 8%, and why if suddenly a country is not part of the European Union, the bonds issued under that country are, do not qualify for MREL. In more in general, we'll te we teach how law matters for financial choices. Another example. You probably have heard about Bitcoin, uh, you, you may even uh, own some tokens, some digital currencies. A big question these days is what is the law applicable to these tokens? And what happens, most importantly, if these tokens have, uh, have a void, have a legal void? What happens if these tokens that you're owning suddenly disappear from your electronic portfolio? So another question we seek to address in this master, what is the law that should apply to finance? And I hope with this example you have an idea what law and finance is, but you may still wonder why you should know that. Well, 
there has been a couple of years ago a survey made by three other law professor asking the major law firm in New York, the 11 most important law firm in New York, what are the skills that our graduates, the graduate from our law school, still missing? And the answer was strikingly relevant for the, the, the master we designed. The first and most important skill they were, they were missing, according to majority of respondents, 83 percent of respondents, was accounting and financial reporting. And the second most important, almost 70 percent of respondents, was corporate finance. We have asked the same question on this side of the Atlantic, and we have asked uh, several constituencies to participate in the advisory board for this master. We have law firms, major law firms in Amsterdam. We have banks and other financial institutions, both Dutch and multinational. We have regulatory authorities, the Central Bank of the Netherlands, and professors from both law and finance from all over the world that have advised us on the curriculum. For whom is this master designed? Again, a simple answer. We want our graduates to be to become T-shaped lawyer. Think of a T and imagine, first of all, the vertical bar as symbolizing the deep legal knowledge. This is one of the things we of the of the goal of this master. But it's not nearly enough. We strive to 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 train our students, our graduates, to have a broader knowledge, particularly in finance and business. Let us start from the vertical bar. Our master provides civil effect for all students who combine this master with a full bachelor in law, a full bachelor in law from the Netherlands, from, from a Dutch university. This implies that with this combination, you can practice law in courts. It is not automatic that the same regime applies to international students. Moreover, uh, lawyers and legal counsel, the ones who practice in other countries should check this requirement individually. And finally, this is not required, it's only required, civil effect is required to practice law in court, it's not required to give legal advice. Because the most important aspect of the master we are offering is we providing the education for the 21st century professional. Very few graduates in law combine legal knowledge, deep legal knowledge, with finance knowledge. Even at the top law firms, this is a unique selling point of graduates from this master. Another aspect you may want to consider is that the remuneration package in corporate financial law, which is a core business of this master, are top of the market for legal counsel and regulation expert. If you're not in there for the money and you really rather want to make this a better world to live in, interdisciplinary law and finance knowledge is an high demand in different parts of the public sector, particularly regulatory agencies, governments, think tanks, and university. To sum up, you'll be so broadly educated that this will lead to essentially a job guarantee. If you don't believe me, try to look up a couple of words right now or later on. For instance, T-shaped lawyer. If you look, look up T-shaped lawyer in the Netherlands, you'll, you'll see immediately that one of the major law firms in Amsterdam will pop up uh, with the same expression. And, and, and from this web page that, that, that is on the slide, you will see that the Brow uh, hires new, new young associates uh, in a so-called browery where law graduates are taught to become interdisciplinary, to get the skills of the shaped lawyer. More in general, you can go on major job searching uh, websites like Glassdoor and type in law and finance, legal and finance, and you'll see that, for instance, there are currently 174 jobs only in the Amsterdam area. One of them that is still open is fraud analyst at booking.com. You can do the same exercise in LinkedIn. You'll see that the same, again, legal and finance keywords applied to Amsterdam area, 164 results, including Signify, legal expert and control officer, Signify is the successor of Philips after the spin-off of Philip Lightning. So there are major multinational companies that are looking for this kind of interdisciplinary professional. It's now time to take questions from you. Do you have any? No, not yet. Well, if there are no questions, then it's perhaps our time to ask questions. If you, are you already logged in on this poll? 
go to this URL that was uh, mentioned by showing at the beginning, polev.com slash patches, are you in? Let me try to ask you a couple of questions and see a little bit, uh, to, to hear a little bit about you. Where did you obtain your bachelor degree? We have two responses. Uva, elsewhere in Europe. So some people did the bachelor at, at, at Uva, at the University of Amsterdam, or else elsewhere in the Netherlands, and some other people from elsewhere in Europe. So it's quite mixed, at least in the audience today, it's quite mixed background. Let's move on to another question. Which bachelor degree do you have? Let's see where we have other a little bit of diversity here too. Law, mainly law, mainly law, mainly law. Law plus other studies. So some of you have studied more. I've taken additional education on top of the bachelor in law. So here's a little bit less diversity, but, but usually, and we can tell you in the, the classroom we have right now, there are many, many, many students that have taken more than legal education. It's also quite representative. Another question, which job you would like to have after this study? So here we have a kind of a concern. No, no, not yet, not yet. So, 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 okay. So, so, mass majority lawyer at law firm, as, as you would expect, but, but there's a lot of interest in other, in other jobs. So, both in-house law, in lawyer, so still the legal area, but also expert governmental institution regulator, so public sector, as I mentioned. And a few people don't know yet. A few people don't know yet. Well, you figured it out after after studying uh, in in this in this master. Final question: Why are you considering this master? Think a little bit about it. Yes, content, content, great university, Amsterdam. Very interesting. So you are very content oriented, which which uh, is flattering for us. Um, I can differentiate myself from other law students. Uh, this is, this speaks to the unique selling point argument I made before. Good job perspective, great university, and indeed Amsterdam, it is a lot of fun. I agree. But that shouldn't be the main motivation. Okay, thanks a lot for, for answering these questions. Let's move on very quickly to, to the curriculum. Uh, I don't want to take too much time from, from your questions. Uh, but, uh, but I would like to give you a sneak peek of the curriculum that we have designed. I, I, again, as I said, with, uh, with the advice of several stakeholders, and particularly the advisory board. So, so this, is, this is the uniqueness of this master. You will see two colors here. Uh, the green represents the Faculty of Economic and Business of the University of Amsterdam. The red represents the law faculty. This master has the firm commitment of two major faculties of the University of Amsterdam. And that's represented by the, the, the course they're contributing to. So you see that half of the course are taught by economics and half of the course are taught by, uh, by the law faculty. So there is indeed both finance and law component in this master. In particular, there are courses that concern finance and economics. They're mainly taught by, in the economics and business. Uh, courses about financial law that are taught mainly at the law school, and courses that are a little bit crossing uh, the, board, the boundaries between the two on regulation and institutional design. And you will see that both that these are these are taught both at the law school and 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 the business school. And the thesis, you see that the thesis is the only item that's two color because the thesis is supposed to 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 be really interdisciplinary and combine the skills that you have matured throughout the year. Now, uh, this is a very dense master. You can see it already from this picture. It's not only about the contents and how interested it, they, they are and, and uh, the great tissues that you will have, but this is a really demanding master. We do not advise uh, you to take this education while doing other things while well, having other jobs or doing other masters. Essentially, it's like having studying for two masters. So you should be ideally fully committed for, to this master for for this year. Why this is state of the art? 
The University of Amsterdam has a long-standing tradition of cooperation between the two faculties of economics and law, and that's called the Amsterdam Center of Law and Economics. It's a 15 years old center that has worldwide uh, uh, reputation on topics that feed mainly, but don't exclusively, into what is taught in the Master of Law and Finance. So, because this is a research-based education, uh, it, it's a firm component of this curriculum, which in terms of teachers combine world-class academics that are based in the SLE and experienced practitioners in Amsterdam. I will not elaborate on the identity of the teachers, but you will see from the pictures that it's as we, uh, it's the faculty of this Law and Finance Master, and uh, this is all very passionate and dedicated teachers. And finally, there is us, Suin and I, uh, the, and we are very supportive uh, and, and, and looking forward to, to, to discussing with you all the, all the needs that you may have du during this year and before. To conclude uh, on this part, I want you to give an idea, first of all, of our class, our very first class in this master, the 2018-2019 cohort. It's a class of about 40 students. And what, what is interesting about that, there's many, many interesting aspects of this class, but, but perhaps the, a key aspect is that it's an extremely diver, diverse class with 14 nationalities represented, okay, and three continents. It's truly international pool of students that combines with a truly international pool of lecturers and speaks towards another dimension of T-shaped lawyer particularly the multicultural character and the international character of this environment in which we will be studying. And this represents the environment of typical organization out there, the typical employers that you will have, who are also, which are also multicultural and international. Finally, this master has already uh, up and running student association, Alpha the Amsterdam Law and Finance Association. The overarching goal of this association is to connect the students, also prospective students, also you right now, with the world of law and finance. And they organize a, a, a lot of activities, guest lectures, but also extracurricular activities of several kinds. For instance, there has been recently a number, not, even, not, not only one, a number of, of, of visits to, to major law firms and other firms in Amsterdam. The association is planning to organize study trips uh, that are connecting you with particular places where law and finance is being developed, both educationally and professionally. And you are free to look it up and to register with them even before starting to study with us. Shrink. Great. Thank you, Professor Pachez. Now it is time to introduce to you our student voice for today, Rafaelia Gila. Hi, yeah. hello. Um, what made you follow our master? So the main reason that I decided to follow this master uh, was my last year experience as trainee lawyer, where I actually realized the interdependent relationship between law and finance. Uh, being involved in cases of banking, uh, law, corporate law, I understand that a key for a successful uh, lawyer is uh, to familiarize himself with the underlying economic concepts in order to be in a better position to negotiate. So this was the starting point for me to challenge myself and coming out of my comfort zone. Great, thanks. And uh, what is it that you would like to learn from this master program? Um, I can say that my main goal is uh, to gain a deep legal knowledge of all financial regulation, but also uh, understand the main financial concepts and finally stop being scared of numbers, a fear that every single lawyer has. Also, coming from a country uh, which has suffered from the financial mm -hmm. crisis, for me it's really important to understand the operation of the financial system, to see which were the causes and the tools that we can uh, prevent a crisis like this. So I can say that I want to gain the qualifications to be a lawyer who doesn't hesitate to express his opinion when he's in the same table with people from financial sector. Yeah. 
And what kind of job would you like to pursue after this program? Uh, as Mr. Patz has mentioned before, just a simple uh, research on LinkedIn will make you realize that uh, there is a big demand for lawyers with financial knowledge, both in the legal and non-legal sector. So personally, um, I'm considering to um, discover the world of financial consultancy, uh, where I hope that I will actually be able to apply the combined knowledge uh, I gain. And I really want to highlight uh, this new opportunity, especially for international students as myself, who have difficulty exercise the legal profession uh, abroad. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, maybe we have time for one or two questions for uh, Failia. Hmm. No, not yet. And nothing is broken, Bob. Just a moment. Yeah, let's, let's see. wait mm. to see. Okay. How important is the finance background? Okay. Uh, I'm a person who has n had no finance background at all. And I can say that actually is important, but it should not be a factor that uh, will make you step away from uh, this master. Um, there are professors inside who really support you uh, on it, and they start from the basics. Uh, but definitely I can say that it's an asset if you already have a finance background. Okay, great. Um, yes, I think we will move on then. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. All right. So now I will explain the admission requirements and procedure for this program as we often receive questions about this. Okay, so in general, uh, our website has uh, also describes a clear application process that will guide you step by step um, on how to fulfill certain administrative requirements, but will also explain to you all the entry requirements for our selective uh, program. So since we are still a relatively new program, uh, we have an admission, admission process on a rolling basis for this year. This means that once you have submitted your application, we will review it and, and then try to get back to you within a reasonable time period. We aim for an international and diverse class like this year's class. Uh, and in so far, we have already received many applications from all over the world. So that's, uh, that's great. So the deadlines for this year are as, follow, are as follows. Uh, for non-EU students, April the 1st. For EU students, May the 1st and for Dutch students, July the 1st. So the differences in these dates relates to the uh, visa requirements for most international students, as well as immigration office formalities for EU students, and that could require more time. So even though the Dutch students have more time uh, to uh, submit their application, this should not keep you from applying because we do have an admission on a rolling basis. Please do know that even if you haven't finished your studies yet, that's okay. You can still already apply for our program. As long as you know that the diploma date is not later than the end of August of this year. All right, so let's look at the entry requirements. First of all, you should either have a bachelor in law or a bachelor degree with a significant law component of 60 European credits in law courses. Uh, as mentioned before, our admissions office will check each individual case. Then when it comes to our selection, we look at your CV, your grades average, and also your other activities. Maybe you have done internships or you already have some work experience or any other activities that you've done. We do emphasize the, import, the, the importance of a really solid uh, motivation letter. I think this is a very distinguishing factor. Mm. We'd really like to know why you are interested in this program and what elements attract you um, and how it fits into your ambitions. 
we'd really like to know what drives you. And for us, uh, again, a good motivation letter and a clear motivation letter with these reasoning um, can really help uh, in, in your application. Try to keep it to the point though. So when it comes to uh, the English test, most international students have to demonstrate their English level, uh, level from a proficiency test. So this could be either from TOEFL, IELTS or Cambridge English, C level one or two. Uh, please note that we don't arrange this test for you. So uh, we please submit this um, certificate with the rest of your application documents. Okay. Once we have reviewed uh, all your application documents and in case of a positive evaluation, we will invite you for our mathematics test. The reason for having a mathematics test is that we want you to understand the basics of finance. The entry level for this master is Algebra 1 Khan Academy and the entry level will be tested online and details how to practice and to sign up for this test will be provided to you by us via our communication channels. Practice information can also be found on our website. So again, the rationale for doing a math test is that this master really does not want to make any concessions to the contribution of economics uh, to its curriculum. So in summary, Subject to positive test outcomes of both maths and the English tests, we select candidates based on bachelor study results with at least 60 European credits of law courses, your CV and motivation letter. And we will inform you about your selection within two weeks after you have completed your application, including the maths and English test passes. Okay, so here's our contact information. Um, of course, our website provides uh, the, the, the step by step guidance in the admission procedure and the general aspects of our program, including our curriculum and a brochure you could download. Our website URL is uva.nl slash LLM dash law dash finance. Uh, you can also, uh, of course, contact our admissions office and you can find them by going to our website on the right hand bottom of the page, there's a button you can click on the contact page website. For general programming queries, you can also email us lawfinance-fdr at uva.nl. And to keep up with recent updates or recent news events, you can also check out our Facebook page. Okay, I think we have time for a few questions. Um, this one, this one. Oh yeah, okay. several one. One. Right. Uh, Any uh, recommendations regarding the maths test? How difficult is it? Well, I understand uh, it's really quite basic high school algebra level, uh, but we really want to know that you can work with numbers, especially since the first block you will have many finance courses, and that will be very helpful. Uh, it's a similar, do we have to take math test immediately after the admission or there's a deadline? No, uh, well, basically we will invite you for our math test and we uh, ask you to do this within a reasonable amount of time, within a few weeks, that will be very helpful. All right, I'll take the, the other one. Do you have uh, to take them? No, wait, the other one. Uh, do you, do we need work experience to apply for to this master, do we have to translate the marks? So first question, you don't need work experience to apply for this master. Uh, you, you, need, you need to have a bachelor with the TIC 60 EC in law, and that's, that's enough. Regarding the translation of the marks, I'll pass this question to you. Do you know? I think, I think they need to, you, yes. you need to have a translated transcript, yes. right? Yes, yes. Um, more, if you have a very specific question about that, please go to the contact page button, but the admissions office uh, will look at these documents and transcripts in uh, English language as well. Do you consider opening the program part-time for full-time employees in the near future? Mm. Uh, no, mm, not that I know of. Uh, and as I said before, 
the, the, this master is very intense uh, and intensely so. So, so we, we, we want really to combine the legal training, uh, very specific and very in-depth, with the finance training. So there is not so much room for other occupations. How much Dutch law is in the curriculum? Uh, the, the master is also international. So there is uh, there are examples of Dutch law. For instance, the course that I teach in securities regulation is a law course, and we don't use Dutch law. We use mainly European law. Uh, in securities regulation, mm, that, that doesn't make much difference because most of Dutch law applicable to, to securities regulation come from European uh, Union law. But of course, it's not always directly applicable. So, so you will have the instrument to research Dutch law and apply it in the several areas of finance uh, law that we cover, but we don't teach specifically Dutch law. What, you um, want to take this one? Yes. Uh, what are the entry requirements regarding grades? Okay, so uh, basically, of course, you need to pass and have that your bachelor degree. Uh, of course, it helps if these are uh, above average grades, but uh, you know we also look at the other aspects. So it is the total evaluation of grades and CV, other activities and motivation letter, and of course passing the tests. Do we have other questions? Any other questions? Or you have any follow-up questions? I mean, maybe we didn't. We did answer something of, of some aspect of your question. Some questions were manifold. Are you all satisfied? Yes, something is coming up. Is part-time offering? It's not the case. Can we complete the course in more than one year? Uh, yes, uh, it is possible. It is not recommended. Uh, because you will miss some part of the learning experience. There is a logical progression in the curriculum. So we, we, we want to build up. Uh, so if you, if you uh, don't take all the courses at the same time, or but you spread it over two years, although it's technically possible, you'll miss part of it. That being said, the practical implication of doing a master in two years is that you have to pay the tuition fee for two years. So uh, after the end of August, the new academic year starts and you will have to pay tuition fee. Any other questions? Okay, so um, the lines will still be open for about half an hour or so. So Miguel, oh, there's one more question here. Is it possible to take advanced classes in corporate finance valuation from the MBA program of the Amsterdam Business School? Uh, uh, honestly, I don't know. I think for MBA you will have to register yes. for, for, for a separate education. What I can tell you though, that I know, is that we have, in, in, in the Law and Finance faculty, we have the same teachers that, that teaching in MBA. So the quality of the, co of the corporate finance courses is comparable to the, to the courses that are being taught at MBA program. Okay. All right, uh, again, oh, another one. <laughs> Is it possible to take additional courses to the extent time-wise okay? It is possible. It is possible to take additional courses. Uh, we, we, we certainly don't, don't, don't prohibit this, but I honestly don't see that happening. Uh, it, it's a demanding, uh, it's a demanding course. Uh, it's demanding master. We want to keep you engaged. We're gonna keep you busy. I mean, in, there are situations in which you will have an assignment, kind of, pretty much every week or so every two weeks. So, if you have the time and the energy to do to do that, you're welcome to do so. But, but uh, it's not very common. All attendees. Any other question? If there are any questions, I think Shwin is trying to close the webinar. Uh, so please. So again, hurry up. lines are open uh, for another half hour or so, but also afterwards you can. I showed you all the contact uh, details on how to reach us. Um, and also, our admissions office can answer your specific questions on your application. Well, most importantly, thank you for joining yes. this webinar. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and we look forward to hearing from you.
Okay, thank you so much for joining us today.